Hello, hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to this uh, video which hopefully will show you how to make the base of the correspondence folio, the blue tick correspondence folio with the cards and everything in it. So what I used as my base was a, a file folder and mine measured 13 and a half, I think. And it measures to the wider section uh, nine and a quarter, I think. It doesn't really matter because we're chopping it up, but those are the measurements I started with. So what I did was I chopped this at eight and a quarter. So now I've got this section here, which is eight and a quarter inches tall, eight and a quarter. OK, and then I take my scoreboard and put some score marks in it. Now what we're, I've, I've already done one and I've inked it so you can see kind of what we're aiming for. It's got this front flap which opens up then this, so that it's fairly straightforward. I've inked it so you can see a bit more clearly. Um, but it's fairly straightforward, you just need some measurements. And the measurements are as follows, but I chose to use the, the creased in, you know, the factory made crease, if you like, to be, to use it on my file folder because it was, it's such a strong crease. I thought I would have to wrangle with it. Um, so I put that there and my spine for this piece is three quarters of an inch. So I've got that factory made um, crease line on there, which is actually nine inches, but it doesn't matter where you put it um, as long as you count three quarters of an inch back and score that. And that's going to be our spine. So that section there is our spine. And then I want the front piece to measure six inches. So at the moment I'm on eight and a quarter. So if I go to two and a quarter, that will give me six inches. Crease that and that's going to be cut off there actually. It's just a score line to make us aware. Let me just check that because I think I moved it. So that's, no, no, we're all right. That's at nine, that's at eight and a quarter. That's at two and a quarter. Yeah, lovely. And this bit here gets cut off. So that's waste. That's going to get cut off down there. So our measurements are, there's the factory crease here. So I've gone three quarters of an inch that away. So that little section there is three quarters. And then here, I've gone six inches, scored again that's going to be cut off. So it doesn't matter what this measures. That's what I was saying to you at the beginning. It doesn't really matter what size file folder you've got, to be honest. So let's bump that factory crease right up to the side and I'm going to uh, score at six again. So score at six. Score at six and three quarters. And then I made my flap on the end to be two and a quarter. So that's one, two and a quarter. So there, you could leave the whole thing, you know, I mean, it's, it would be fine. But I'm, I just made mine two and a quarter, Woo. two and a quarter. And this bit here then is excess that's going to be cut off. So let's just go through these measurements again. So from here, to this score line is six inches. This is the three quarter again for the little spine. And this is two and a quarter from there to there. So this was our factory made fold creased already. So three and a quarter to the left, uh, three and a quarter, three quarters to the left of that score, further six inches to the left of that score. Then from our factory fold going this way, six inches, score, three quarters of an inch, score. And I've scored at two and a quarter just to let me know where to cut that off. 
and and that's that's pretty much it that's the base so let's just crease those in and then you'll see it come together before your very eyes so let's cut off the bits that we don't want which are the bits on either end so cut that bit off and a little bit on the other side Just about there so those are just they're actually remnants we don't need those so let's have a look then so that factory crease is already in that's great so then we want to fold on the line that we put three quarters of an inch to the left of that. So put that in and burnish that down. So there we have our first spine in place. And then coming to this side, we've got our other spine. So fold that at the crease mark. Make sure it's nice and straight, burnish it in, and then the other side of your spine, like so, and burnish that in. Now that's that's pretty much it. That is the rudiments of, of the folio. Okay, what I, what I did with mine was I just rounded the corners off of this front flap, and I used the half inch munchy bit there and there so this is our front bit and that's that's pretty much it that's it guys really so the other bits that go on this are two flaps that go on centrally and i'm going to use the remnant here for this let me show you what what it is i'm talking about these bits these bits that go at the top and the bottom like that okay so let's get some measurements for them they measure four and a quarter so let's write that in and then we'll know four and a quarter from edge to edge and then the whole thing measures four. So from right this edge here, right to the top is four inches. So you need to cut yourself a piece that's four and a quarter by four, and you need two of them for the two flaps. So let's get this out. Four and a quarter by four. So I'll cut a piece off. here that measures four Cut that down and then another piece that measures four and I've still got a little bit left here so I'm going to cut that's the four inch way so I'm now going to cut them at four and a quarter Doesn't seem to want to be straight. Four and a quarter and four and a quarter for this one too. And then we'll put some crease, some creases in there. So I'll just get my little scoreboard out. There we go. And which is which is which side this is the four inch side this is the four inch side right so this is the side i need my creases on excellent so i'm going to crease at one inch with the four inch side along here the four and a half down here okay so along the four inch i'm going to crease at one inch and crease at one and a quarter okay and I'll fold those in so you can see 
what I'm doing. I can't just finish those in. And then I'm also going to round the corners of these with the half inch uh, side of this. There we are. So you can see now that we've got that little spine in the top and it's rounded there. Excellent. We just need another one. So putting the four inches along the top like so. Yep. And crease at an inch. One inch and one and a quarter inches to give us our little spine and just fold those in as well and burnish them like so and we ju it just gives us that little spine section round the corners off like so and that's the two flippy flaps now the other thing that this journal has are two pockets that hold the cards in place this is one of them Oops. Um, and as you can see it's a gusseted pocket <laughs> um, i think we did these in one of the mr greens but uh, you know that's ages ago so i'll show you again how to do these how to make your little pocket that's actually got a gusset in it so we can put our greetings cards in there and that eventually will go there like that with another one on the other side so the greetings cards can slip in now then this is possibly the most complicated little bit but it's it's not beyond us we can do this just pop that away for a sec right so what we need is this we need a piece of card that measures a piece of our file folder that measures three and three quarters so let's write that in three and three quarters from there to there and it measures five the other way so from there whoop, to there <laughs> it's got a bit of a curve on it that but you know what i mean that's five inches so we need to cut out two pieces three and three quarters by five now don't get intimidated by all this measuring and stuff once we've done this it's absolutely done i don't really think there's any more at all actually so is that more than five inches yes it is so i can cut these off at three and three quarters three and three quarters you might have to play this back a couple of times but i'm gonna keep it really quite short so you won't have to go backwards and forwards too far um just to get all your measurements and everything but i will go through those again with you and that's the remnant and that's pretty much with the other bits the only remnants we've got really don't be perturbed about the writing on the on the card it doesn't matter at all that will all be covered right so now with the scoreboard and this is possibly where you need to really listen perhaps so with the oh i didn't cut that off at five did i i cut off three and three quarters and i didn't cut it at five so let's just do that now so i've got a piece of card that is three and three quarters by five that's all you need to know and this can be any card you could be using you know any card that that you've got any card stock at all but it does need to be card because it needs to be fairly uh, sturdy right so let's pop that in there so i've actually got the three and three quarter edge on the top and i'm going to mark it at an inch and once again at an inch and a quarter 
like that and then an inch from the other side like that and an inch and a quarter so that's what we've got there now then I don't, I'm hoping that you can see these marks here some of this we need to cut off and we need to cut along that score line there and this score line here so hopefully you can see that so I'm going to do that right now just trim out those little bits where the scissors here so go you know on the inside of that bump we don't really want the the bump of the score line so there we are that's that bit cut out and then if I fold these it'll all become apparent what's going on I think so I'm going to crease that there crease the other one crease that there and the other one and then fold them like that and you can see we've got ourselves a little a pocket with a, a gusset all the way around it a quarter inch gusset which will allow us the room to slip the cards in now I decided I wanted to cut the, the fronts off mine just to make it sort of um, I don't know I just thought it looked prettier that's a good enough reason isn't it so I measured down an inch and three quarters this is arbitrary you can make yours whatever you wish um, pencil I measured down an inch and three quarters there and I measured an inch from the spine the gusset along there and then I just got my Timmy trimmer out line those two marks up which I think is about there somewhere I think we're not far off there and that just gives you your little gusseted pocket with an angle on the front how neat is that so we need to make another one because we need two so I'm guessing it's this piece of paper here so with the scoreboard I'm going to mark now I want this to be the other way on if you like the opposite side so I'm going to this measures three and three quarters so I'm going to come in an inch which will be two and three quarters score down there and then yeah that's an inch isn't it and then another quarter of an inch which is two and a half score down there like so and then we're going to put it that way and we're going to score now measures five across there so we're going to score at four and three and three quarters like I say you might need to hear these measurements a few times before you know before I make sense to you so I'm just going to cut this out same as we did with the other one like so and then crease this up Actually, if I thought about it, I could have done it the other way and got the writing inside, but it's not really, uh, it's not going to matter. Won't see it anyway. So crease and burnish all your uh, score lines. And there we have our other little pocket that goes that way. And I just need to trim that off to match. So what I'm going to do is just use this as a template line them up there and just draw down there with my pencil just makes it a bit easier 
and cut that one off too and then we should be okay there we are right so that's kind of that's that's it actually for the construction um you've got your two pockets you've got your two flaps and you've got your big base so let's now move on to one the one that i've inked just so it's a bit clearer for you um, I don't need the scoreboard anymore. Wrong way around. There we go. Um, and I'll just go through these measurements again. So if you want to grab yourself a, a paper, you know, pad, whatever, whatever, wherever you're writing them down. So it's six inches three quarters of an inch, further six inches, another three quarters of an inch, and then two and a quarter. And that will give you this, okay? And then you need, for your two flaps, you need a piece that's four and a quarter by four. And you score at an inch and an inch and a quarter and they will go there like that okay so we've got two one at the top and one at the bottom okay and the only other thing then is the gusseted pockets which will sit there and there and I appreciate you might need to watch that bit a couple of times uh, just because I probably have not uh, haven't explained it well enough but you need one piece that's five inches across uh no five inches down the depth from here to here is five inches and across is three and three quarters now on the across you score it an inch and an inch and a quarter and on the five inch one you score it an inch and an inch and a quarter and then when you fold it like that, you've got yourself a little corner pocket. Okay. So that's the bones of it. That is the bones. Um, and I've gone ahead and I've cut myself some papers and I've sewn around them. Um, I've cut my spines. I haven't sewn the spines, but they're going to go obviously there. And what I will do is go ahead and... Ah, there's something else I need to remember to tell you. Something important about magnets. This is how this closes. It cl the closure is a, a mag magnetic closure. So on the flap, on the little two and a quarter inch piece that you've got, you need to get your magnets out. And I'm going to take two. These are always so tricky to get out. I think oh, there's three in there. So I'll just take two of those for the moment. There we are. And we'll pop them where we want them. So these ones have got um, glue on the back with a release uh, paper. <laughs> just Oh, they want to be joined together. <laughs> there we are. Right, let's keep that one bit distance away. So I'm going to release the release tape and stick it down there. Just a, let's say, half to three quarter inch in from all sides. Something like that. So about there like that you can see that there so I don't know what I've allowed around that uh, from the center of the magnet to the outside is three quarters of an inch so that's that's perfect and then I'm going to do the same with the one down at the bottom and put it you know similar sort of distance in it's sticking to my finger yeah, about there. So we've got our two magnets which are going to form the snappy closure on the front. 
if we put magnets on the front as well. So there are my magnets, there's my front. So that's going to go over like that and I want the magnets to be on the back. I don't want them to be on the front. So uh, we need another couple of magnets. So there's one here. And that's those ones finished. And then I need one more. So this one here. Right, now. I keep doing that. Let's keep them opposite ends of the mat, shall we? Oh, they're a bit too close to that one. Let's put that one there. Do watch out where you put your magnets. They can be lethal for pets and small children. Well, for anybody really. So just watch what you're doing with your, with your magnets. Right, so what I want to do is, yeah, I, mm. this always gets me. I always have to stop and think here what I'm doing. Um, I need them like that. So I need them on this side here. It's going to be a darn sight easier if I put them on the front, isn't it? Let's do that. Let's put them on the front. Ah, wants to glue the other way. Oh, I can't work this out. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to put it that way. And if you just let it let it go, it will find its own place, actually. Which is there. So I'm holding on to that. I'm going to open that up and just draw around that so I know where to put it. Like that. Seems quite a long way in, but that must be where it is. Right, so let's pop that down there. I'm not pressing it for good and ever, just in case it's not right. So fold that in, fold that in. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's perfect, in fact. So let's do the other one while we're at it. Right, so that's found its place. So I'm just going to hold that because as soon as I take the other magnet away, it will drop off. And that's where that one wants to go. There. So let's draw around that so we get that in the right place. Oh, we always have to stop and think about these magnets, to be honest. Right, let's just try that for size, see if it's right. Perfect. That's perfect. Lovely. Got there in the end. You you know, like me, you might have to stop and think about this for a minute. But once they're on, they're on. And they'll do the job. The adhesive stuff, I don't know what they make it out of, but it's incredibly sticky. Um, and that's our magnets, our closure done finished just goes like that beautiful now before you stick this section in which is the section where the greetings cards will go you really want to be sticking in your flip flaps and then the paper goes over the top and the easiest way i find to do it uh, unless you've got a perfect eye i just haven't uh, is measure that it's four and a quarter put a little mark just at the two and an eighth which is halfway I've lost my pencil yet again. <laughs> Can you see it, people? Is it somewhere just... Oh, yeah, somewhere obvious, of course it is. So I'm just going to put a little mark at two and an eighth there. That's my halfway. And I'm going to put a little mark halfway house here as well, which is six, so that's three. So I know then when I put this on, I need to line those two marks up and it'll be centralized so you just want the glue on the one inch section at the back i'm going to use collal in case i have to budget around a bit oh it started to rain here like thunder rain mind you we haven't had any for a while so really i suppose we mustn't rumble too much so you put that on line up your little marks Whoa, this is very slippery 
um, right to the edge like that that's lovely so that's one of our flip flaps in oh just moved it again so just make sure that it's just nice and flush along the top that's lovely and we'll just do the one on the bottom as well the pockets um, leave those just for the minute the, the pockets that hold the greetings cards and I'll show you how to do that lovely oh I didn't mark this one I didn't mark it so where's my three inches it's there and my two and an eighth <laughs> try and do it before you put the glue on it's much easier two and an eighth is there okay but we managed right so I'm just going to line those lines up Get it flush with the top. There we go. Sorry, this is a bit of a dry video, and you know, I know it is, but there's just a lot of information to impart, um, and I'd rather just do it sort of deadpan, if you like, so you, you, you do get all that information that you need, and you can go off and make your own. So, right, there we have it. There's our two flip flaps, okay. Now, I've cut out all my papers for the backs and the fronts and everything. So I'm just going to pause here now and I'm going to stick my papers in. I've actually sewn around uh, all of them apart from the spines. They've all been sewn around. I've left some ends, some thread ends somewhere because I rather like that. So I'll stick those down and then join me again when we'll deal with the pockets going onto this piece. Okay, so I've put all my papers on, uh, barring the one section, which I'll go through with you with you now. Uh, the front, which is magnetised. And I've left this fairly plain because I like to put some, to really quite decorate the front page. Uh, and this will have flowers and lace and stuff on. So these are two quite plain papers, but chosen uh, with that intent. And then it opens up. I've got the flip flops in place. Uh, I actually haven't done the back of them yet. Uh, that, that still needs to be done, but that's not a big job. And then on the outside, yep, yeah, papers, 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 right the way along. And that's the inside there. So there's just this section to do. And that's the section that has these little uh, gusted pockets in. So what I've done is I've cut myself a piece of paper that just fits on the front there nicely uh, and I've sewn around them you don't need to sew around everything I just really like it I'm really into it at the minute actually um, and I think it gives a more completed look I think so I'm just going to stick these pieces onto those gusseted pockets gusseted pockets sounds slightly rude but you know what I mean And then we can get cracking with the one piece that we haven't put on yet. So they just fit nicely on the top, like so. Let's get my towel and whiz around that in case there's any glue anywhere that I haven't seen. There we are, and same on the other side. The There is a piece of timmy metal work that goes between these two but actually they need to be in situ first before you do that so uh, that will be probably next the next video or something there we go so that goes like that now then, the spine itself, you will see, has writing on it. But it doesn't matter even if it hasn't got writing on. I want to put some um, washi tape on it. 
and it's this thing I think this might be Dina Wakely washing washi tape it's not Timmy anyway but it is a Ranger one I'm pretty sure where's the end is that the end yeah that's the end and it's quite sticky stuff so we're okay so I'm just going to put this on that gusset section there like that And up the other one as well. Actually, let me just trim that off first. It's going to get in my way. It's quite sticky, this stuff. You know, if you burnish it down, it's not going to go anywhere. It's fine. And then up this side here. There we go. Trim that bit off as well. There we are. So when, when we fold that over, that will be the bit that you'll see, the, the gusset bit. So now we need to glue this, washy there, need to glue this closed. And I find it better if you just take a little wedge off there up to that first score line. So then when you fold that over and glue it, it, it it's neat. You don't see the um, the edge of this card. So let's just glue that like that. Perfect. You just have to hold it for a minute actually because you can't squash it flat otherwise you'll squash your gusset. So and <laughs> I just have to say it, nobody wants a squashed gusset. So that's that. You can see all the way around it's got that lovely washi on and it makes a difference. So you can see it doesn't matter whether we have writing on the on the file folder or not. It doesn't make a difference because we're covering it. So that's that there. Up the other side. All these threads getting under them is a bit of a nuisance. There we go. Just trim off those little ends there. Right. Burnish that down. And then that goes like that, that goes like that. So we just want to trim a little, a mitre off that corner really. To the score line finished with that for the time being. I will also put this on the the gussety part, the spine part of the flippy flaps. But you don't need to see me do that, you know how to do that. So this just needs to get glued like so and just hold it. Squidgy glue. But that's okay we'll just just hold it like that just until it tacks up it doesn't take this glue long to tack up in fairness we're having a thunderstorm here <laughs> when i was just sawing this last little bit there it was absolutely the, it was it must have been on top of us because uh the the lightning was so bright followed immediately by the loudest thunderclap um it's a good job I'm not afraid. I actually quite like storms, you know. I like all sorts of extreme weather, um, be it snow, anything. So this is the piece. Let's just go through this properly. So open our flaps up. This is the piece that's going to go there like so. Let's just check that we can still close the flaps. Yes, that's, I haven't encroached on that. And these are going to go down at the bottom here to catch the cards, to hold the cards in place when we come to put those on. So they're going to go there like so. Now, it's just easier if you glue those on when you're putting this on as well. Seems a bit 
bit of a trauma, but it's just the easiest way of doing it, I've found. So what I'm going to do is glue those on down the side here. Along like so. I'm going to be coming along after with other glue to stick the thing, the page down, but that's just to get that in place. So get it into the corner like that. Get a flat bone folder or your ruler or something that's going to allow you to get in there and press that down in place like that. So you're pressing on the bottom. Don't press on this bit. That's lovely. Yep, perfect. And then we're going to do the same with the other side. Turn it over, make sure it's snug in there, then your bone folder or your flat ruler or something and press the bottom down, holding it in place. <laughs> it's one of these things, isn't it, where you need six hands, but it's not as bad as you might think. So that's that pressed down there, and then we're just going to stick that that page on. This is kind of the section where it all happens. The flaps, the pockets, everything. Um, but I think they're on there and they're all right. So let's just glue this. I'm just going to use my collar, which I tend to use for sort of bigger sections. Oops. awkward to hold. So I'm just gluing the back of those pockets. Make sure they're done properly. Central section. Right, let's get this stuck down. Way. So they want to be right in the corners. That needs to be lined up nicely. Make sure it's not yeah, that's great, that's great, that's great. It looks marvellous. So I'm going to get my bone folder out again. Just make sure that's all stuck down. And then once again, just, just down. Because you can't get direct pressure on these because you'll flatten the gusset. So this is the, the best way of getting pressure on them. Like that. And this one. So I've done mine in Tim Holtz, as you can see. Uh, of course, you can use anything that, that you fancy. Any pretty papers, shabby chic, vintage, boho, anything. Anything that takes your fancy. Right, I think they're probably stuck down as well as I can get them for the time being. I'm just going to leave this now to, to thoroughly dry off. I might put the inside bits of the flippy flaps in. Um, but just to dry off, let's just check that's okay. Hmm. I don't think I can, I think it's all right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that'll be fine by the time that's got its button and doodle. Yeah, so that folds over there, that folds there. And our folio actually has come to life now. It is actually a folio rather than a file folder. So I hope you could follow me. I hope I was coherent. And if I was, you should end up with something that looks not too dissimilar from this. <laughs> so thanks for joining me today. I will be back relatively soon uh, to go through the collages that we, you know, the, the nice interesting bits. This is just the bare bones of it, which you've got to have got to have that first but it will be nice when we come on to the collage so take care everyone i will see you very soon um, and thanks for watching bye